All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the United States Civil War. So this is going to be a short unit. There's no cool Call of Duty video game clips because the Civil War would be pretty boring as everybody would have to reload after one shot. Not fun. But anyway, where we're going to start is with the election of Abraham Lincoln. Because Lincoln is on record as being against slavery, the South is afraid that he's going to make efforts to end slavery. So because of Lincoln's election, many feared that he would try to abolish slavery and several Southern states seceded from the Union. Key vocabulary were there, seceded. What that is, and a lot of students I've found don't really understand this, which is crazy to think about it, but the Confederate States of America are the Southern states and what they're doing, they've seceded from the Union or America. They've left America and they've formed their own country. That's what that's all about. Now, the Virginia U.S. history course is not a military history, meaning we're not going to talk about all the different battles and so on. There's really only a couple that we touch on. But the first thing is we're going to talk about the key events of the Civil War. So first and foremost, Fort Sumter. This is the opening confrontation of the war. And as you can see in the image, Fort Sumter is something similar to like Fort Monroe uh, that we have locally here in Hampton. Fort Sumter is in Southern Territory, obviously, and once South Carolina leaves the Union, and they are now part of the Confederate States of America, the Southern military wants to go and take that from the Northern soldiers there. So Fort Sumter is not the first battle. It's really just this confrontation as the South wants to take control of the fortress. The first battle is called the Battle of Bull Run or the Battle of Manassas if you're from the North, but you won't have to know that. Next up, we have the Emancipation Proclamation. This comes a little bit later. Abraham Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation after the Battle of Antietam. Antietam is the first battle that many consider would be a Northern victory. And what Abraham Lincoln was afraid of is he really didn't want to issue the Emancipation Proclamation after a loss. And the South was winning the war pretty much early on. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation is greatly misunderstood in a lot of ways. It freed only the slaves in rebelling states. So if you're looking at the map, you can see Missouri, Kentucky, Delaware, Maryland. Those are states that have slaves, but they did not leave the Union. So therefore, Lincoln did not free the slaves there because realistically, he's probably afraid that he doesn't want those states to join the South if their slaves are taken away. Many would argue that the Emancipation Proclamation is more of a military strategy rather than an honest attempt at freeing the slaves, considering from the Confederate point of view, they're a whole different country, and Lincoln doesn't have the authority to do that from their opinion. As a military strategy, it causes lots of problems for the South because slaves get the word that they're now freed, and therefore the slave owners obviously have to attempt to keep them under control, etc., rather than fighting in the war. And finally on this slide, we have the Battle of Gettysburg. This is the turning point of the Civil War. So Gettysburg is a little different because it's in the North. Gettysburg is a small town in Pennsylvania. Robert E. Lee thought that if he went into the North and won a big battle, that it would cause some of the people in the North to not want to fight, that it wasn't worth it because the fight is on their home rather than in the South. Unfortunately for the South, lucky for everyone else, the South loses the battle. It's a big loss, honestly, for both sides, as 50,000 people died over a three-day period. But until Gettysburg, the Confederates were winning, and after Gettysburg, the North gains momentum and begins taking control of things. So next up, we have the events of the Civil War. First, we have Sherman's March to the Sea. So who's Sherman? William Tecumseh Sherman is a general for the North, and if you look at the graphic to the left at the bottom, what he does is he starts in Atlanta, Georgia, and spreads his army out very wide, and he marches all the way to Savannah, Georgia, thus why it's called the March to the Sea. So in the process of this march, Sherman's troops destroy railroads, farms, livestock, etc. Some people will say that he is a war criminal because they're targeting civilians and civilian property. But again, his idea is he wants the will of the Southern people to die off. And in terms of, he doesn't want them to want to fight. So the less they want to fight, the sooner the war will be over. Next, we have Lee's surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. 
So Robert E. Lee surrenders to Ulysses S. Grant. Lee surrendered, but there still was some fighting going on in other areas, but regardless, this is considered to be the end of the war. A few days after this, unfortunately, Abraham Lincoln is assassinated. And then finally, we have Juneteenth. June 19th, 1865, Texas slaves were freed as U.S. Army troops arrived to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth was made a federal holiday in 2021. So based on standardized testing, this section coming up is one that students kind of struggle with. So people of the Civil War, there's a few people you need to know. First, we have Jefferson Davis. He was the United States Senator who became the President of the Confederate States of America. So once again, a lot of students have trouble understanding that. The South leaves the United States because they want to have their own country. And that's what the Civil War is all about, is Abraham Lincoln holding the nation together. Next, we have Ulysses S. Grant. He's a Union military commander who won victory over the South where several others failed. Now he goes on to become the 18th President of the United States. Next, we have Robert E. Lee. He's a Confederate general, and a lot of people don't know, but the way that the military was broken up was more by regiments and individual armies by their location. So he is the Confederate general of the Army of Northern Virginia. After his death, Lee became the leading symbol for the Lost Cause movement, in which white Southerners celebrated the leaders of the Confederacy as fighters for a just cause, rather than the creation of a new nation based on slavery. Frederick Douglass is a former enslaved African American who becomes a prominent abolitionist. He urged Abraham Lincoln to recruit former enslaved African Americans to fight in the Union Army. All right, and the last part that students really have trouble with is the economic impact and migration after the Civil War. Remember, economic, it means jobs, trade, and money. So in the South, they were left utterly destroyed and left in ruins. The South would remain an agricultural-based economy and one of the poorest parts of the nation for years to come. However, the North and the Midwest emerged with strong growing industrial economies, like factories, etc., laying the foundation for sweeping industrialization of the nation, except for the South. In the next half of a century, and the emergence of the United States as a global economic power by the beginning of the 20th century. So this video is probably one of our shorter ones because luckily most students do pretty well on the Civil War, but the key points where people struggle is one in general, just understanding that the South has left the United States in terms that they want to become their own country. The other part is the individual people and what their roles were. So hopefully this helps you. Remember you can rewind, watch it as many times as you want to, and I'll see you in the next one.